A very good morning and welcome to ITN News coming to you live and direct from the ITN studios with me, Abra Rabid. Now, before we go into our stories in detail, let's take a look at our headlines. Court warrant to arrest former minister Ravi Karna Naika and other suspects in connection with the central bank bond fraud sought. The special Gazette notification on preliminary arrangements of the upcoming general election issued. The president has ordered the officials to provide the fertilizer required for the Yala season without delay. Borbechia bacteria issued to control the dengue mosquitoes. Japan's Olympic minister says that Tokyo 2020 games could be postponed. And now news in detail in our lead story. The Attorney General advised the acting IGP to seek court warrant to arrest former Minister Ravi Karna Naika and other suspects in connection with the central bank bond fraud. Accordingly, the Attorney General has issued a warrant for the arrest of 12 suspects, including former Central Bank Governor Arjun Mahindran, owner of the Perpetual Treasury Company, its CEO, former Director of the Public Debt Department, and former Minister Ravi Karna Naika. The Attorney General has instructed the IGP to conduct further investigations into the alleged misuse of the Treasury bonds worth 36.98 billion rupees at a bond auction held on the 29th of March 2016. The Attorney General has already filed a case against the Central Bank's former Governor Arjun Mahindran and several others in the three-member Special High Court. In more local news, the special Gazette notification pertaining to the preliminary arrangements of the upcoming general election was due to be issued at midnight yesterday. The inaugural session of the 9th Parliament will be held on the 14th of May and the general election will be held on the 25th of April. Following the general election on the 17th of August 2015, the inaugural session of the 8th Parliament was held on the 1st of September 2015. It is in accordance with the powers vested in the President under Article 70 of the 19th Amendment, the Gazette was issued. With the dissolution of the Parliament, 75 parliamentarians have lost their pensions. Nominations will be accepted from the 12th to the 19th of this month pertaining to the general election. President Gotabe Rajapaksha has ordered the officials to provide the fertilizer required for the Yala season without delay. The President issued this directive at a meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat on the present situation of the fertilizer import and distribution system. Fertilizer stocks are expected to reach the island within the next few days. The President emphasized that provisions should be made to distribute fertilizer without delay and should not inconvenience farmers. The problems that had arisen during the import of fertilizer were discussed at length. Attention was also paid to the application of high quantities of chemical fertilizer in anticipation of higher yields. Discussions were also held regarding the use of organic fertilizer instead chemical fertilizer. Minister Chamal Rajpaksha and several other officials were also present at the discussion. In more news at home, politicians of the government and opposition parties expressed their views on the UNP crisis at several places. Former MP Miroshin Pereira stated that the leader and the deputy leader of the UMP should discuss about the current situation of the party and take appropriate decision to rectify the differences. He added that otherwise the party will be in a bigger crisis. Meanwhile, Ajit P. Pereira noted that Sajid Premadasa and his faction was entrusted the task to form an alliance as others are unable to create such a bloc. He highlighted that some people in the party are trying to hinder the forward march of Sajid Premadasa. Akhila Viraj Karevasam said that the working committee of the UMP was in the opinion that the alliance should adopt the symbol of elephant or swan as other symbols would tarnish the identity of the party. He highlighted that in the caliber of general secretary of the party, he is ready to do any commitment to protect the harmony among the different the official release of the Wolbachia bacteria to control the dengue mosquitoes with the assistance of the Australian High Commission in Sri Lanka was held in Colombo.
This was done at the Ananda Samarkon Outdoor Theatre, Nugay Goda, under the patronage of Dr. Anil Jasinghe, Director General of Health Services. Anil Jasinghe stated that the bacteria will be released to several places, including Colombo City, where mosquito population has been found. They haven't just introduced this uh, uh, methodology to us. They have tested this in their own country and then tested in 13 other countries and they have come to us. Everybody is talking about bacteria, but in fact, everything is very simple. Here is a box called a mozzie box, and this is a box you hang from a tree, just like this, or maybe a building. Inside the box, you put a little tablet, a capsule, and this has the eggs for the mosquito and some food to make sure that the mosquitoes, when they are young, can feed. You put it in the box and fill up just to the water that is here. You close the box, hang in the tree for around 10 days, and the little mosquitoes will come out of the little holes that are there. This method that we are looking to put here with the World Mosquito Program has been used in 12 other countries, and it is something that is proven, tested, and safe. For us, I'm hoping we can all work together to ensure that the numbers of dengue cases will continue not to rise, but to start to fall here in Sri Lanka. Three Russians who had been engaged in trafficking of flora and fauna in Sri Lanka have been remanded till the 12th of this month. The order was given by the Norelia magistrate. It was reported that they had collected identical flora and fauna of Sri Lanka countrywide, including Sri Lankan frogs and snails. A stock of flora and fauna has been arrested with them. A motor car had skidded off from the road due to excessive speed in Gampaha. A restaurant in the vicinity of the Gampaha General Hospital has been damaged by the accident. The 65-year-old driver has not sustained injuries. He was returning from the jogging track nearby. A bus that was transporting school children had met an accident at the Verulugas Hinne area in Navalapitiya. The accident had occurred last afternoon. Four students were in the bus when the accident took place and no one had sustained injuries. The Navalapitiya police is conducting further investigations. Health sectors are urging the public to take steps to protect themselves from the potential health problems could, that could be caused by the high temperature at present. The Meteorological Department says the prevailing hot weather is likely to last until May. The Meteorological Department states that the heat level in the northwestern, western, Sabaragamua and southern provinces and in the Mana and Monragala districts are high, are in a high rate. Drinking enough water and resting in the shade are essential in the current weather condition. It is emphasized that excessive strenuous activities should be curtailed and that the use of white or light colored clothing is another way to be protected from overheating. And that is all the news for today. Do join us again tomorrow for the very latest. For the ITN News team, I'm Abrar Abid. A very good day and take care.